What's up guys, Rogue9 here. The Operation Chimera characters are out for Rainbow Six Siege and you will probably have seen plenty of coverage of their abilities by now, so what I want to do in this video instead is explore the two new guns that these ops bring with them. Are they good choices to run with? How do they stack up against the guns of the other attackers or against the alternative choices for both Finker and Lion? Let's find out. I will be judging both weapons on the following stats. Damage output across all distances, recoil, reload time and ADS time. Look for a pinned comment below with the timestamps to each of the relevant sections of the video. So let's take this one gun at a time starting with Lion's V308 submachine gun? Hmm, machine gun? Battle carbine? Okay, whatever a compact weapon chambered for full powered rifle cartridges is, that one. I tested its damage drop off, all data represented in my online spreadsheet, link in the description, and the in game baseline damage stat of 44 points is accurate, I double checked, but its drop off occurs between 20 and 30 meters, which does not fit any of the existing categories. It is worse than the other assault rifles, if we want to call it an assault rifle, 25 to 35 meters, but better than SMGs, 18 to 28 meters. And to a degree, I guess it makes sense for such a unique weapon to get its own drop off curve. This unique drop off of course makes the work for fans like me just a little harder but it won't really have any perceptible impact on the effectiveness of the gun in game so okay I, I guess I'll accept it. 44 damage per shot sounds quite powerful but it is only one point above the average for assault slash battle rifles in the game, 43, so I would call the V308 a medium powered gun. What makes this weapon truly great on paper is its outstanding fire rate of 850 RPM which when combined with the baseline damage gives us a damage per second or DPS output of 623 against level 1 armor up to 19 meters distance. This is far better than any of the SMGs and amongst the assault rifles it is only beaten by the F2 and AK-12 on paper and this is where things get a little tricky. As part of my preparation for the evaluation of these two guns I thought that I would double check some of the in-game info. Not just damage but also recoil and maybe even fire rate. Checking the fire rate is a bit challenging as I have discussed in previous videos since I can only record at 60 fps which means that each frame is 16.67 milliseconds and when you're dealing with guns that can fire one bullet every two or three frames you end up with significant rounding errors. Now bear with me here, I promise it's not going to get too technical, but for instance, for the Spear 308, Finker's gun, I fired three magazines and recorded average shot intervals of between 81.967 milliseconds and 82.466 milliseconds, which results in an actual fire rate of between 728 and 732 RPM. Now, while that is significantly short of the 780 RPM that the rifle is supposed to have, I would still be happy to put this difference down to the limitations of my measurement techniques. So the bottom line there is that accurately measuring the in-game fire rate of automatic weapons is more or less impossible for me and I would expect to see some variation in the results. Nevertheless, when we come back to the V308 though, the results are pretty clear. I fired three 50 round magazines without the plus one and the times were 4.079, 4.162 and 4.179 seconds. Translate this into an RPM and we end up with between 717 and 735 RPM and that is definitely nowhere near the advertised 850 RPM that the V308 is supposed to have. And we don't even need a frame by frame measurement to confirm this, just listen to a side by side comparison between the spear and the V308. If one of those guns is 780 RPM and the other 850, I'm eating my spreadsheet. They sound basically identical in terms of their cadence and if we assume that my earlier fire rate measurements are accurate, we end up with an actual DPS of 528 for the V3 the heavy vector, is that maybe easier to say for the heavy vector, lines gun anyway, instead of the theoretical 623 DPS I mentioned earlier. 
What does this mean in terms of the gun's performance in comparison to other weapons in the game? Well, firstly, it's a lot less effective than initially assumed, and that could mean that instead of being the third best rifle in terms of damage output, it could be distinctly mediocre instead. But if the fire rate of the V308 is inaccurate, can we really trust any of the other data that I have on the other guns? And the answer is no, of course not. None of the DPS or TTK stats in my sheet can be trusted apparently. So good news for me, I guess I have just uncovered a really juicy topic to test in my next video. What are the real fire rates of all full auto guns in Rainbow Six Siege? Look out for a video discussing this topic soon. I also double checked the in-game recall patterns for the two new guns by resizing and over overlaying them onto test patterns so that the first and second shot groups matched. Plus, I also used Dokebi as a rough and ready stand-in for the approximate size of a character at 9 meters, and the patterns fit quite well at this size. If we then compare the in-game recoil pattern of the V308 with its actual test pattern, it again does not seem to match as well as I would like it to, but I suppose it's close enough given the fact that I'm pretty much eyeballing this. Let's compare this recoil to the rifle's closest competitors in terms of damage, Jackal's C7E, Fuse's AK-12 and Zofia's M762. Up against the C7 and AK, the recoil of the V308 is not that great in terms of muzzle climb, but better in terms of horizontal recoil. Compared to the M762, it's just outright better. I don't know if that pattern for Zofia's gun is even accurate, because it looks absolutely horrible both for climb and horizontal dispersion. I feel that double checking and comparing all the recoil patterns should be another project for the future. Yeah, let's put that one onto the to-do list as well, why not? Reload times for the V308 are 3.31 seconds from empty and 2.608 seconds tactical. These times are almost identical to those of the M762 and AK-12, not terrible but still a bit below average. But if we take into consideration that the V308 has a magazine capacity of 50 bullets instead of the normal 30 or less, the slightly below average reload times start to look a lot more attractive. I'll take almost double the ammo with virtually the same reload time any day. The baseline ADS time for the heavy vector is 451 milliseconds and 284 milliseconds with the angled grip. See my previous video on grip choice for a further insight into grips. For the three competitors I've chosen here, the times are M762, 451 milliseconds, AK-12, again 451 milliseconds, and the only standout is in fact Jackal's gun at 301 milliseconds. So the V308 is nothing special, neither in a positive or negative way, it simply has the standard ADS time for most rifles. Given that the C7E gets preferential treatment here though, it looks like we have another worthwhile topic for the future. How do all of the guns in R6 stack up in terms of ADS time? Yep, that's another one for the to-do list. And with that, in conclusion, the V308 should be one of the most effective guns in the game despite its earlier damage drop-off compared to the rifle class, but since there is such a significant discrepancy between the theoretical and actual DPS values, it is hard to judge how well this gun actually stacks up against other weapons. For now, the fact is that it's nowhere near as good as it was maybe initially supposed to be. Recoil is manageable and compares quite favorably to similar rifles. Reload times are not outstanding, but the 50 round mag capacity more than makes up for this. The ADS time is standard, but if you're comfortable with the baseline recoil, you can go ahead and attach the angled grip for an amazing ADS. So all in all, despite the slower than advertised fire rate, this gun is very competitive and makes Lion a significant threat to the defenders, and that's before he even gets going with his gadget. And now, what about Finker's rifle, the Spear 308? Its drop-off is quite straightforward. Just like all the other assault rifles, it starts at 25 and bottoms out at 35 meters. But just to keep things interesting, the in-game baseline damage of 38 points is wrong since the gun will actually do 40 points of max damage instead. And even though the max damage is better than expected, it is still 3 points below the average for rifles. 
Its minimum damage at 35 meters is 25 points, which is just a touch above the overall average of 24.78 points. So even though the rifle's theoretical 520 DPS would put it just below the rifle average of 548, we cannot say at this stage how the measured 487 DPS will stack up. The in-game recoil pattern of the spear actually matches my test pattern quite well, certainly better than that of the V308. If we compare this to the patterns of the most relevant competitors, Thatcher's AR-33, Hibana's Type 89 and maybe Buck's C8 SFW, we can see that it's pretty good, although given that the C8 supposedly has a great recoil, according to the in-game stats, and the Type 89 has the exact same as the M762 but worse, I would say that maybe these patterns really do need some testing. The day that the C8 has supposedly one of the best recoil patterns is the day that Mission Outbreak freezes over. Reload times of the spear are 3.31 seconds for a full reload and 2.407 for a tactical reload. So interestingly, the full reload is just below the average, but the tactical reload is above average for the assault rifles. This makes the spear overall slightly quicker to reload compared to the AR-33 and Type 89, but nowhere near as good as the C8, which happens to be the second best in class after the C7. The ADS time for the spear is the standard 451 milliseconds, and it is the same for all three of the guns I have chosen as benchmarks. To conclude, Finker's rifle is again pretty decent. On paper, it looks a little underpowered by comparison to other rifles, but it makes up for this with very good controllability. The reload time from empty is not that great, so try to take advantage of the very good tactical reload if you can, and ADS time is unremarkable. Running the Spear 308 makes Finca a definite threat to the defenders, and even though she has access to both the 6P41 LMG and the SASG-12 shotgun, both very good weapons in their own right, I will probably still favor the Spear. And that's it! At this stage, I would give both of the new guns a tentative seal of approval, with the caveat that every evaluation of every full auto Rainbow Six gun I have ever made could change drastically once I test and calculate the actual fire rates. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on those results when they come out, and until then, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode. The ADS time is standard, but if you're comfortable with the baseline recoil, you can go ahead and attach the angled grip and um, <coughs> Okay then.